Welcome everyone to a hidden park in the middle of Queens, New York City. This is Socrates Sculpture Park, which is all the way at the very end of Astoria, Queens, uh, in the between the neighborhoods of Ravenswood and Astoria, right by the waterfront. Now, I think this is a tiny little treasure here in New York City because you get to see some monumental sculptures here in this beautiful greenery space, which is not so common in New York, especially when it comes to newer artists. So let's walk around today through Socrates Sculpture Park. Welcome everyone. I'm Ariel with Urbanist. Let me know where you're watching from. So this is Socrates Sculpture Park. It's a modest park compared to the gigantic one we visited last broadcast, which was Storm King Art Center. But many of the people involved in Storm King Art Center were also involved in this sculpture park. They go hand in hand. Donald says, thanks for finding lesser known treasures and exploring with us. Hello, Kay. Hello, Susan. Hello, George. Hello, Regina. Yoli. Rosalyn. Welcome, everyone. Hello everyone, I'm Ariel with Urbanus, and this is a sculpture park. If you're familiar with my last broadcast as we went up to Storm King Art Center in upstate New York, that was a massive sculpture park. This one is a little bit more modest, but I think it's worth coming here. I came here maybe three years ago, uh, just as I was beginning Urbanus. I came on a very kind of rainy, uh, depressing day. Uh, and I want to come back here on a nice summer day. However, it is the pandemic, so here we have a lot less artwork this year. But hopefully we'll enjoy the walk around. And I'll tell you a little bit about its history. Hello, Sylvia, uh, Sylvina. Hello, Vaclav. Rochelle, I'm glad you caught me live. I'm so glad. Thank you so much for watching. This is a artwork by Jeffrey Gibson. I think I'm getting his name correct. And he has only, he has one main intention with his artwork. He envisions what if Native American art was taken as seriously as other forms of art in America during the modern era of the 20th century. For him, he envisioned a world where America would embrace its own native peoples. That never actually happened, so this is in his interpretation of what if Native American art was thrusted into the modern world. And he's made many pieces like this, and this is kind of a ziggurat style monumental piece of art. And these types of ziggurat style structures we do see in the southwest of the United States of America. Hello, Rob. Hello, Susie. Susie, thank you so much for the stars. Hello, Linda, Gwen, Mar Maria. Welcome. So I'll show you the views as well. Now, where are we right now in New York City? Well, you're, we're seeing some skyline. That skyline isn't the skyline of Manhattan first. We're actually seeing Roosevelt Island, and then behind Roosevelt Island is the Upper East Side of Manhattan. So we're seeing two skylines over here. And we are currently located in the story of Queens, which is right there. The red marker is the Socrates Sculpture Park. But why is it called Socrates Sculpture Park? Well, that's called after the main residents of this neighborhood of Astoria, Queens, which are Greeks. For quite a while, this actually was the second largest city of Greeks in the world. Um, there were so many Greeks living here at so, uh, some point, especially during the 80s and 90s. And they named this park in honor of those residents. Let me zoom in on the artwork. So it reads, Future, if it reads, the future, future, future is present, present, present. 
Hello, Donna. Hello, Gabriel. Congrats from Santiago de Chile. Gracias por mirando. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hello, Lori, Will. Hello, Jackie. Nice to see you here. So how did this start? Well, let's walk around and see a little bit more. We'll see the views. Well, actually, first, before we go see the views, those are the buildings behind. I actually approached that building. It was very nice to look at afterwards. But here we're surrounded by beautiful flora. This used to be not really good place to grow anything. And the reason for that is this used to be an estuary. And for many years, it was a huge dumping ground. Almost for more than a century, it was a dumping ground. Sand would be dumped here and also a lot of garbage. That garbage started accumulating over the century, making a huge piece of land that was just landfill, but not quite the best soil. Actually, really, really poor quality soil. However, in 1986, two men decided to do something about it. One of them is Mark de Suervo, which we actually saw at the Storm King Art Center. He's the one who designed the huge monumental pieces of steel beam art, which I think we'll see a little bit further down. The other one, who was partly involved, was Noguchi. Noguchi also helped uh, revitalize this area, and they envisioned a park for the artist by the artist built by volunteers, not getting any money from businesses or corporations. It was a fully per privately funded artistic project. And thus, they turned this basically dump, I'm not using it as a judgment upon the land, it was literally a dump, into this beautiful area it took many years of revitalization to the point that we have it here today. Look at this. Wow. And lots of people are using this as a park. So there's over 900 species of flower all around here as well. And a beautiful little butterfly. Look at that. Now also right here is the only, basically the only beach in this entire area of Queens. Uh, however, we're not seeing it right now, I think, because it's high tide. But when it is low tide, it turns into a beach. But not a beach that people are going to take a swim in. <laughs> and here we see some of the landfill, because part of this was a port as well. There in the distance, we see Isabel Island. Sad that they did that to the estuary. 90% uh, of your baby fish start in the estuary. Oh, that is sad to hear. You know, I haven't looked too much into marine life. And yeah, you, you might have a very good point. Right down there is the ferry stop for Astoria, Queens. And then you can take the ferry further up to Upper East Side, to Yorkville, I mean, and then go all the way to the Bronx, which I've done before. And that is all Roosevelt Island, and then behind it is the New York City skyline. Let's uh, check out if we can find more art. Hi, Betty. Hi, Cindy. Welcome. So, as you can see, we still have a little bit more landfill here. It's a piece of metal right here. Look how beautiful they transformed this. Absolutely gorgeous transformation. Hi, Patty. Hi, Judith. So here we can see a little bit more of what used to be a landfill. So this transformation happened in 1986. There's a little documentary that was made about it, which I'll post later in the comments. It's pretty fascinating. And to really start getting this green, I think was around 10 years it took to get this green that we see today. 
And that's the magic thing about having these uh, reused spaces. It goes to show that sometimes an industry can ravage our lands, but with great care and vision, you can completely transform a ravaged industrial landscape into a beautiful park. Now this is now an official park of New York City. Allison, yes, there's a few great coffee shops. And excuse me, let me pass right behind you. Excuse me, thank you. There's a few great coffee shops. My, one of my favorite coffee shops is Kinship Coffee. There could be a blue bottle here, maybe. I think there's a Joe Coffee now, but kin Kinship Coffee is my favorite, Kinship. That's when I left for New York City for VT. And here we see Mark the Swervo's artwork, but it's, I think it's out of display. Which is a shame. <laughs> There's some kids playing uh, some soccer. But maybe, I'm not sure if I can walk inside. So that is the steel beam artwork of Mark de Suervo. Now Mark de Suervo still lives here. And he lives in Astoria, Queens, a few blocks away. 87 years old and he still makes pieces of art. It's very impressive. Let's see if we can see more of the artwork. Hello, Nina. Hello, Allison. Nice to see you here. More old infrastructure. You see some pipes sticking out. And this is a beautiful park. A lot of people hanging out here. Jackie says, lovely mask. Thank you, Jackie. I appreciate the compliment. Ooh, there are bathrooms now here. That's good. You, there used to be no bathrooms here but they changed their policy. So I absolutely love the variety of of trees over here. Really great gardening work. So unfortunately this area is closed, but we can peek through the fence. I'm not sure which one is exactly Mark de Suervos, but I would assume a few of them are. This is one of the reasons why I love New York City. So much creative energy from so many talented people, says Donald. Yes, I agree. Allison, I'm doing really well. Thank you so much for asking. Hope you are well as well. George misses his spinach pie. You know, good point, George. Uh, <laughs> good spinach pie over here. There's a lot of great Greek restaurants. Let's uh, go above the fence. What is this? I'm not sure what this is. It looks like a, a bomb, but obviously it's not a bomb. So here is the official artist in residence place for the Whitney Museum of Art. If you haven't been to the Whitney, it's one of the best museums in all of New York City. It's right at the end of the High Line, the very southern end of the High Line. And this is their artist in residence studio. It's made out of reused containers. Right there, hopefully no one's in. Jackie says a, a bomb. Yeah, you know, it, it, to me, it looks like a bomb. Uh, there's a great movie called The Devil's Backbone by Guillermo del Toro, which uh, is about an orf orphanage that has a bomb right in the middle that never exploded. And that little art or maybe old infrastructure reminds me of that. I can't really tell which is which. 
And I think it's for staff offices as well. Let's go over here. Let's check out more of the artwork. Where's the, what's the High Line? High Line is an elevated park. It's an elevated park in Manhattan, right by the West Village, and goes all the way to Midtown. That's the High Line. Elevated park, 1.45 miles long. Some artwork is being made here. Thank you for setting a good example out and about with the mask. Yep, I think uh, wearing the mask is very important. Here is a little lending library. Let's open it up. Let's see what's inside. It's a bit moist inside. It says the little Paris bookshop is a, lots of kids books. Huh, that's so cool. Have I ever been to the High Line? Yes, I've been to the High Line many times. Many times I've been to the High Line. So this is staff only, but I'll show you from over here. Some old signs are being reused as part of the roof. And here's a few sculptures. Uh, you might be seeing a High Line broadcast soon because the High Line is empty. <laughs> because no tourists, uh, there is timed entry. So I might have a High Line basically to myself. Jackie says, I'm still laughing. You said it looks like a bomb, just like my dad would say if he saw that. <laughs> Here's a few sculptures. I don't know who the person is. Let's see. The person is John Aheron. Not sure how to pronounce that. It was installed in 1991. Commissioned by the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs. Cool. One fun fact, and uh, George posted this many times on the Urbanists of the World page. This used to be called a ghetto blaster which is a term no longer used. It's not so politically correct, but at that time, it was called a ghetto blaster by anyone. And here's a young boy with a mustache and his pit bull. Those picnic tables are so awesome. Love the colorful tables. Yes, I agree. Cool, colorful tables here. Yes, this is, a, this is a sculpture pieces. This is a sculpture park. Sorry, I can't pronounce your name. I can't read Greek, but this is a sculpture park it's called the Socrates Sculpture Park. And I'm not sure if we can see anything here. Probably not. So there is a tiny little farmer's market here as well. Not that many sculptures right now. I guess they're in transition period because of the pandemic and they couldn't fully install. But here's one being installed right at this moment. And yeah, it's called a boombox by many people nowadays. So here's one being installed. Let's take a close look. So we have some more secret pieces of art over here. Here we have some stones within the wall that looks like uh, the letter blocks that you play with in preschool. <laughs> George says, Ariel, you'll notice I'm being a good boy today with your, with your interpretations of art within quotes. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Needed like an 18C size batteries that lasted a day if you played it nonstop. Indeed, yeah. 
This is more of the flower beds. Now let's take a look at one more piece of art that's technically seen outside of the park. And I'll point out two other places you can visit here. Let's check out this first. So this is more, more information on the monumental art we saw. Jeffrey Gibson, as I mentioned, is the art in the middle. It's called Monuments. And so you can see me, how I look when I'm walking around with the camera. <laughs> Betty, you just love my excursions. I'm so glad. So the park is open right now. No needing to sign up. It is a basic New York City public park. Basically a New York City public park. And here's the last part. Since the 1990s, they've been using this billboard in front of the park, not as a way to advertise the park itself or anything that's taking place in the park, but as another piece of art. And this one is a commentary on monuments in America. Here we have the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, DC. And here we have something that is on the news right now. It is the Theodore Roosevelt Monument right in front of the Museum of Natural History. That monument is going to be officially by the city pulled down for various reasons. It's a very uh, poignant message and let me show you one building over here i think we already saw we basically saw the entire park there will be more pieces once the pandemic is over hopefully and here's more of a story of queens now actually before i go this way i'll zoom in here this way it's going back Right there, fortunately, is closed, but that is the Noguchi Museum. Noguchi is the artist we talked about before. He's the guy who uh, designed this table. Very famous Japanese-American artist. And he has an entire museum dedicated to his artwork over here. Let's walk around. I'll show you one more old, cool building. So that's basically the park. Highly recommend it. It's very easy to get here. All you gotta do is take the subway and it's take the N train to Astoria Boulevard and just walk down here. It's about a 10 minute walk. You can take an Uber or of course you can get here by city bike. Like that person right there. Incredible artists, how awesome. I agree. Beautiful artwork here. And I'll show you a really cool building. I don't know too much about it, but every time I come here, I'm always mesmerized. Here we have old sign. It says furniture wholesale. Office furniture for wholesale. Another helicopter passing through. And this appears to be a little restaurant. Cool. For dogs. This is a restaurant for dogs. Interesting. It's called Chateau, Ch Chateau de Wolf. And look how amazing this building is. 
Let's see if we can. Wow. Absolutely amazed. So actually, here is the beach. You can see the beach right here. And it is a kayak landing. So you can take a kayak and row through the East River, if that's your deal. <laughs> Not for me personally, but <laughs> if you're a fan of rowing, canoeing in the Middle East River, let me know, I'm curious. Who would do that? Who would row on the East River? Love the idea of a restaurant for dogs. It's the first, first of its kind I've seen, personally. Wow. So there we go. That was Socrates Sculpture Park and a little bit of a story of Queens. There's a lot more here to see and visit. And I'll show you one more time the views of Ravenswood and the ferry landing. Upper East Side, that's Yorkville right there, right there in the center of the camera. That's where uh, Carl Shores Park is. I've been there many times, absolutely love it. Uh, Patty, I miss your coffee and dinner chats from Italy. Yeah, me too. I really do want to go abroad again and do more chats in coffee shops and, and for dinner. Uh, yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. And Natoli says, thank you for the tour. Actually, it helps me overcome at the hospital. Oh, Anatoly, I hope you feel better. Um, everyone, press that heart button for Anatoly. Huge hearts for Anatoly. I hope you recover. Um, happy that I could provide some entertainment as you're recovering, but uh, everyone wish Anatoly some good health and a speedy recovery. I uh, hope you recover and I uh, hope these views do give some healing. Which borough are you most familiar with, Jackie? By far, Manhattan, but second would be Brooklyn and the third would be Queens. Wow. Great scene from Do the Right Thing. Radio Rahim, oh yeah, I agree. Radio Rahim was a badass. Wow. Anatoly, I hope you feel better. Everyone, thank you so much for watching this tour of Socrates Sculpture Park. I'll be back next Wednesday at 1 p.m. as we explore Cathedral of St. John the Divine and the nearby Riverside Church and all of its secrets. And also you can find more videos on Urbanist History of Cities on YouTube, including the Nikola Tesla video. I made a video about Nikola Tesla and we will see Harlem. Yes, maybe one day soon. Harlem is right down there. So stay tuned this summer. Keep being awesome. And always keep on exploring. Have a great day, everyone. And I'll put the location in the comments afterwards. Socrates Sculpture Park in Astoria, Queens. Have a great day. Bye-bye.